Welcome back to the course in nuclear medicine physics. Today we're looking at photomultiplier tubes. Now, in some sense, the name describes what's happening. You have a photon that enters it and it multiplies it into an electrical signal that you can eventually measure. Now this is really handy because in the last lecture we talked about scintillators, which detect radiation and then emit a little bit of light. So the photomultiplier tube takes that little bit of light and turns it into an electrical signal. So you combine these two devices together and you have a radiation detector. This video will mostly be a summary of the theory of photomultiplier tubes. Anyways, enjoy. Uh, moving on. So let's talk about PMTs, photomultiplier tubes. So, so PMTs have been used to convert this incoming light, which again, so this is a scintillation light um, in, in the, again, in the visible, around the visible spectrum that are coming in. You can actually, if you, ha if you have a scintillator in a dark room and it scintillates, you can actually see it glow by the, by the human eye. Um, but again, remember the incident photon is of course at a far higher energy. Uh, this is gamma rays, but it ends up uh, creating, you know, thousands of scintillation light uh, photons coming in. And then those thousands, um, we want to further amplify, right? Um, to get an electrical signal. So, so the light, so imagine just one of those scintillation lights. So this is a PMT, its job is to convert light into electrical pulses. Um, so it enters the fat photocathode part of the PMT. This is a PMT. This is a photoelectric uh, effect for which uh, Einstein won the Nobel Prize. Uh, so an electron is generated here as a photon hits the photocathode, uh, 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 an electron is generated. And then it starts going through these dynodes. And the job of these dynodes is to amplify those electrons into more and more and more electrons. And then so, so the signal is amplified, 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 amplified in each of these uh, dynodes. And finally it's collected in the, in the anode. So again, just a drawing of you know, PMTs. And there are alternatives to these. Carlos will talk about this in a different talk um, about um, semiconductor uh, approaches to, to, to photomultiplying. Um, so again, the, the photocathode is at the entrance window, and then this is a photoelectric effect. And then these metal plates are called dynodes, as we mentioned. And so you're applying a, 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 a voltage to them in order to amplify the signal. The, 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 the applied voltage per dynode is about 50 to 100 volts per dynode. So let's say if you have 10 dynodes, you're having 500 volts. So you need a high voltage source supply to make this happen. So we usually have high voltage supplies that are around 500 volts to even 1500 volts. And again, the, and, and, and the dynode material itself uh, uh, are coated with things like magnesium oxide. And this results in this, and this allows you you know, the process being used, the phenomena is called secondary emission. So, and so when, when, when this kind of a metal plate is bombarded by electrons, secondary emission allows you to emit a lot more. Uh, so it amplifies the number of the electrons coming in and, and, and uh, generates you know, amplification. Um, so PMTs um, can be influenced by magnetic fields. As you can imagine, electrons are moving. You apply a magnetic field, the electron pathways are gonna be distorted. So, um, so typically they're encased in a magnetic shield of a mu metal. Um, and the mu metal you know, is, is a sort of an alloy uh, that has very high magnetic permeability, which we represent as such. And that permeability allows them to really screen and protect against um, low magnetic fields. Now it's not strong enough to protect against like, like an MRI magnetic field at the Tesla level, but, but, uh, but it's good it, in the sense that for, for low magnetic fields, um, essentially what it does, it, it acts as a conductor really. And it, it just redirects the magnetic fields coming in so that it doesn't impact the PMT. But if again, if the magnetic field is higher, 
that's a problem. And that's why when people designed PET MRI scanners, combined PET MRI, where the MRI signal of the order of Teslas is coming in, that totally messes up the PMTs. And this protection is not good enough. And that's why people have switched to semiconductor solutions to PMTs. And Carlos will talk about that. So here, again, some questions for you guys to, to make sure you, you understand and you go over on your own. So, so please do that. So here's a, here's a poll question that we're gonna do. Um, all right, so the question is, oops. The question is if there is a magnification of four at every PMT dynode and you have five dynodes, what is the total amplification? So think about it. You have five dynodes and the magnification is a factor of four. So if you have such a PMT, what is going to be the total amplification? And again, this is a sort of a underrepresentation of what a PMT actually is. A PMT has more than five dynos, dynos tends to have about 10, you know, 10, maybe people say nine to 16. So it's quite more dynodes. And the amplification is also, is more than four. Um, so, but this is just a, like a toy example. Um, so yeah, yeah. So um, most people got, got the, Correct answer, um, it's uh, D, 1024, because it's four to the power of five, not five to the power of four, but four to the power of five, right? So it's four times four times four times four times four, right? But again, this is an underrepresentation. You, you, if you have, let's say 10 dynodes and you have a, a magnification of seven, then you're looking at 10 million an amplification of 10 million. So it's really of the order of millions that the PMT amplifies the input signal. But this is just a toy example. Okay. Mm -hmm.